Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us here on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio, and what a gorgeous day it is outside in downtown Austin right now. Here's a live look from the Austonian camera in downtown Austin. Gorgeous blue skies out there, incredible temperatures, really a picture-perfect day. And I know a lot of you are like, okay, great, this is amazing for this Thursday, but a lot of you are looking toward Monday and what's happening then for the total solar eclipse Will the conditions be like this? And we'll get to see the full thing. So here to give us a bit of an update is meteorologist Nick Bannon. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. And all eyes are on you guys right now. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no and, pressure. Uh, no pressure at all. Um, it's going to be a tricky forecast because on the one hand, if we were saying sunshine all week long hmm. for the eclipse and then it trended cloudier, then people would be really disappointed. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, if we said pretty cloudy all week and then we see the clouds breaking, I think people are going to be um, uh, excited and, and happy about it. So we're cautiously optimistic that there may be some breaks in the clouds on Monday. Right now, uh, there's still a lot of um, cloudiness at different levels in our forecast, high clouds, mid-level clouds, and low-level clouds. The mid and low level clouds are the ones that usually obscure the sun the most. The high mm. clouds are usually the thin variety that would still allow us to see some uh, some of the totality here. Um, and we're going to dive into some of the things that we're looking at and, and the pattern uh, that's uh, causing this here in a little bit and, and give you our updated uh, eclipse forecast. I do want to show you here uh, what it looks like outside right now. This is going to be a map that we're going to be looking at very closely on Monday because it is the last hour of clouds and radar over the state with the eclipse path uh, right there in the middle. And uh, we are cloud free. We would love to transport this particular day <laughs> into Monday. It is impossible to do that. Uh, but uh, wouldn't this be lovely if uh, we had this weather today on Monday? I know there's gonna be a lot of events going on this weekend tied into the eclipse in the hill country even here in uh, the Metro too. Uh, so let's talk about that forecast first, because it does, of course, lead into what we're expecting here for, for the eclipse. For the rest of today, mostly sunny. For your Friday, uh, plenty of sunshine, just a few clouds later in the day. There's Friday at 4.30 on the top right. You can see the uh, time. And then we get into Saturday. Ahead of a cold front, an increase in moisture and humidity is gonna mean a lot more clouds on Saturday, but still some breaks of sun. And a couple of spotty showers possible uh, during the day uh, and into the uh, afternoon especially. Still, I think we'll have some sunny breaks. Call it a partly sunny day, although around the middle of the day, maybe mostly cloudy. But for a lot of your uh, events that you may be going to or errands that you may be running before the eclipse or maybe you're going to fill up on gas so that you're not having to do it on Monday, uh, Saturday is a great day for that. It's really a, a no problem forecast. Saturday night into Sunday morning, a cold front comes in and it helps to develop some, uh, we'll call it very widely scattered storms and showers. This is 10 o'clock Saturday evening, Saturday night, uh, and there's one o'clock Sunday morning. Some real hit or miss, middle of the night showers and storms, and a few may linger into early Sunday. But these should be over with fairly early on Sunday. And then you'll notice what follows here in the hill country after the morning storms are out of here sunny breaks already starting to develop to the west so we think for most of you your sunday forecast isn't going to be too bad either because behind the cold front the air will start to dry temporarily which will give us a little bit of sunshine but that may not hold here for next monday so first before we get to your monday and we're almost there i promise <laughs> Uh, sunshine here for Friday, more clouds, a couple of spotty showers on uh, Saturday. Best chance for a rain on Saturday comes late Saturday night into Sunday morning, and then the sun is back out again for late Sunday morning and into the afternoon. Now we start talking about the pattern for the eclipse. An area of low pressure starts to set up almost right over Las Vegas as we head into the day on Monday. So there's a digging trough to the west. Uh, helping to throw moisture in our direction from the southwest. While at the same time, at the surface, an area of low pressure develops to the west of us on Monday. 
both of which will help to increase moisture, increase cloudiness, provide lift, and potentially bring us a rain chance and more than a rain chance, uh, extra cloud cover here on Monday. These are the two extended computer models that we look at. These are just one version of each model. Behind the scenes here, we're looking at multiple versions of the same model with different initial conditions put in to give us more confidence in the forecast. But uh, the American model here, a lot of clouds, but it holds off on the very light rain generally to the southeast of us on Monday afternoon. But there are better rain chances for the American model coming at night. European computer model, a little more pessimistic there on the rain. We think it's probably overdoing the rain a little bit, especially for early Monday afternoon. We do think things will slowly get wetter later in the day on Monday, but really all that matters is that 1 to 2 o'clock time frame, and especially from 1.30 to 1.40. Uh, but uh, the European model, not just heavy on the cloud cover, but also uh, brings in the rain. And of course, the closer that rain gets to us, even if it's not raining overhead, the thicker the cloud cover will be. What all this means as far as our forecast goes for the eclipse is not a whole lot of change. Uh, we still think a mostly cloudy sky overall, but the key being mostly, there may be some holes in the clouds as there often are, even on some of our cloudiest days here in central Texas, we can get some breaks of sun and figuring out exactly where those are is still tough this far out. But a high of 84 um, would lean us to suggest that there could be some thinning in those clouds. And if it's more high clouds than low clouds, then you can probably still make out the totality there uh, in between those clouds. We only think that the rain chances during uh, the hours of totality or the minutes of totality <laughs> and the hours of partial eclipse, say from noon to three, uh, only spotty to widely scattered rain. We think the wetter weather is going to hold off until after the partial eclipse is over. But the uncertainty remains on the cloud cover. And we don't want you canceling Airbnbs, canceling hotels. Um, if you're watching us from outside of Texas, canceling flights just yet. If you have to make that decision at some point, hey, I get it. You're trying to save money and not waste your money coming here. But it's still far too early to say that if you came here, you're not going to see anything. Uh, we are not going to be able to make that call here for, for some time. Mm. And when would you be able to have a much more confident approach to this uh, forecast? Because, again, this is all the data and the modeling that you all are having at yeah. this point. But I would imagine it gets a little more clear as we get closer to Monday. Yeah, so here's kind of a nuts and bolts on um, the timeline of our ability to forecast. Because we don't want to get too specific if we can't reasonably have confidence in that specificity. So now through most of Friday, we're just going to be talking about the daytime cloud cover and rain chances, or really the afternoon cloud cover and rain chances. Uh, I can tell you that starting Friday afternoon, our high-resolution computer models that uh, are better with cloud cover forecasting, they're better with convection, meaning bubbling cloud cover as well as thunderstorms, that will start to come into view tomorrow afternoon. So Friday afternoon, we're going to be able to have that high resolution look, at least for the first time, into Monday afternoon. We think this weekend we'll be able to continue to update the hourly forecast through the weekend and on our KXAN weather app. If you've uh, looked at the app and I can pull that up real quick. There's a section under the app where you go to the seven-day forecast right here, okay? And then there's the hourly forecast on another uh, section. We put in the numbers and the cloud cover for this hourly forecast. And yes, you can keep scrolling past Saturday, past Sunday. Right now, that Sunday hourly forecast only goes until 9 a.m., which is about as far as our high-resolution computer models go right now. Beginning tomorrow afternoon, that hourly forecast on our app is going to be updated through Monday afternoon, too. So we think things are going to get better uh, starting then. Just a reminder on um, for those of you maybe watching from outside of uh, Texas or even uh, in our eastern counties where you're not expecting totality. This is a an eclipse that will be seen from all of the lower 48. It's just not the totality for all of the lower 48. And even in our eastern counties, you're going to get, say, 
visibility of the eclipse, but you will not get totality. And the difference, and there's a big pun here, and I'm not trying to make it, Will. <laughs> the difference between our eastern counties and the rest of us in the path of totality is like night and day, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it will look like night or almost uh, in the path of totality. In our eastern counties, it will look like a dim sunshine mm -hmm. if it were sunny. So it is key. It is not good enough to get 99% of this eclipse if you've looked up your location using our KXAN app uh, and the weather uh, and our news section of the website where we've got the areas of totality versus not. It is not good enough to be in that 98, 98, 98.9, 99.5% area. You've got to be in 100% totality to really experience this. Um, and here's a look at the forecast uh, for the other areas of uh, totality throughout the country. And uh, the white is the cloudiness. The gray are the areas where you're seeing through the clouds down to the ground. And interestingly, based on climatology, usually New England and the, and the Great Lakes states are cloudier and Texas is usually sunnier um, on average in early April. But as the current forecast stands, the cloud cover is uh, more widespread as you uh, really everywhere but New England. Hmm. This particular model, though, Will, does not factor in types of cloud cover, high mid-level, or low clouds. Um, if it did, I think we would find uh, we'd be able to sort out and kick out the high-level clouds and get more areas that are at least going to see some filtered totality. Um, and we'll have a better look at those types of clouds again once we get some of our high-resolution computer models in. They, they actually pick up pretty well on those high clouds. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm so appreciative of you and everyone with our weather team uh, just being able to share what information that you have at this point because again so many people are counting on you all to share this information about this particular day in this very specific window um, I would love to for you to just comment about how difficult that is to be able to pinpoint you know just even a five minute window on a certain day uh, you know a few days out so how I can relate this is when we show the monthly forecast or the forecast for El Nino, some people will say, how can you forecast for several months away when mm. you can't even get it right the next day, right? It is easier in some ways to talk about a long-term forecast, which can stretch over weeks or months, than it is to forecast in the near term. Because let's say, oh, it's going to be warmer than normal, uh, cooler than normal, wetter or drier than normal for a certain month or a three month period. Over the grand scheme of those three months, let's say, you're still gonna have your ups and your downs, but you've got time uh, for that forecast to be right over the three months. Even the way that we're forecasting now for Monday, we're talking about the forecast for the day, a mostly cloudy day with a chance for some spotty showers, but maybe you'll see some sunny breaks. We're still being we're being specific about the day, but not specific about the hours or the minutes during the day. This is a forecast that requires we be specific for four minutes or four and a half minutes in some areas, if you're lucky. If let's just say that, uh, let's throw out what our current forecast is. Let's just say we're forecasting a mostly sunny day for Monday and we're not right now. Mm. But let's say there are still a few clouds around and one of them is really big. And that big cloud covers the sun for just those five minutes, right? Yeah. And the rest of the day is sunny. Our forecast for the day would have been accurate, but our forecast for those five minutes would have been, in some people's eyes, a bust because that was the five minutes that mattered, right? Right. It is a bit easier to be more general about a day as a whole or Central Texas as a whole. We cover 15 counties after all uh, than it is to be specific about those five minutes now. Are we pretty confident that there's going to be at least a lot of high clouds around? Uh, are we, yes. Are we pretty confident that we're not going to have a picture-perfect blue sky like we have here today? Yes. Is it going to be perfect uh, totality weather for you on Monday? We're pretty sure it won't be. But will there be openings in the clouds that may open at the right time in the right areas? It's possible. And that's why we're very hesitant to guide you to cancel plans because if the skies open up just a little bit at the right time, the right place, you may be able to make a last-minute move 
north, west, south even, yeah. even to the east, although probably not, uh, and, uh, and, and save the uh, experience and, and still make things turn out. The day itself may be mostly cloudy. We still may get some rain on that day, but just for that short window, uh, things may work out. So that's why we're so cautious to uh, avoid you canceling what you've got going on. Yeah, we just appreciate you sharing that context for us and helping people understand what all goes into your job because a lot of people, again, are watching you all for this specific day to find out what they can expect. And I know that you'll have an even more accurate, more clear picture as we even get closer. Even Monday, because this is happening in the afternoon, you all will have a better idea of what to expect that afternoon on Monday. So please, everybody, yeah. tune in and keep uh, watch with our not only our newscast but also our uh, website and the weather and news app because all that information will be shared right then and there and you can find out that d those details. So I think Nick, that's what your message would be to people: is just stay patient, stay with us, and uh, pay attention to what you all have coming in and the latest information that you have coming in. Yeah, Jim Spencer and I were talking yesterday about how this may be more of a now casting uh, scenario where. Mm -hmm. Monday morning, we're looking at where these holes are opening up in the clouds and uh, and trying to see if the, it's a big enough hole opening in a certain area that we could say, hey, this might be the area to be in, uh, or whether those holes are filling in with more clouds and saying, uh, it's, it's looking less likely. We're still going to be able to give you uh, a more accurate forecast for the day and most likely for the hour, but for those five minutes... It might be a last minute call there and, and uh, you know, that uh, is as accurate as we can be. We don't want to promise more accuracy than we can deliver, mm. uh, but that's the way things are looking at this point. Well, I know people are trusting you guys and uh, we'll be watching very closely as I will as well. Um, I'll be in Marvel Falls that day, uh, hopefully getting to see everything very clearly. And there's a big community festival that's happening out there, too. A lot of people are expecting that area, so it'll be fun regardless. Uh, a lot of people are just anticipating this and have a lot of attention for it. Hey, we all want to see this eclipse. It, we've been talking about it for years now. Yeah. And uh, we're all hoping for the best. Uh, in no way are we trying to make the forecast worse than expected uh, or the other way. Are we trying to make it better than expected? We're just trying to lay it out as we see it now. And uh, we'll continue to update it here uh, through the next few days and uh, through the weekend. Well, meteorologist Nick Bannon, thank you again for joining us. And uh, I, we appreciate everybody who's been joining our live stream, too, because, again, this is something that is a big deal for a lot of people, and they're wanting to see what these details are. And I'm sure they'll be tuned in very closely to what you say over the next few days. So we appreciate it, as always. That is Nick Bannon. I'm Will Dupree. We will see you back here at another time. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the day. Find all of our Eclipse coverage on KXAN.com, so I'll send you there. Take care, everybody. See ya.